Hi and welcome to this course about ethics. This is the YouTube version of an actual ethic course that will be starting, um, I think, next week. We will talk about CBT, Cognitive Behavior Therapy. First, I think every student should know some basic CBT skills and it's a good basis to understand some ethic principles. Let's start. Dr. Paul here. We've got a young lady who I think has a dislocated elbow. Mm. Let's go take a look. Okay, this is Dr. Paul and this is already important. He says, I think she has a dislocated elbow. He's not saying, okay, uh, I'm the doctor, I'm the physician, I know this and this is the problem, let's fix it. He says, I think. Okay, knock the knock. So, who's this? Is that your unicorn? Okay, this isn't part of today's topic, but he's really empathetic. He's really friendly to the little girl. That's a good quality and we will talk about this later. I heard you were at school when you got your owie. Yeah? Mama. Mommy's gonna hold your cup? I'll hold your cup. Okay, can you, you wanna hold this unicorn with your other hand? This hand, can you hold it with that hand? Can you lift that hand up? Say tickle, 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 tickle. Here's the hand. Hold this hand. Can you pick it up with this one? That one there? No, it's hard. You want to pick it up with that one. Okay, I'm going to stay right there. So I have a tongue blade for this hand and a tongue blade for that hand. You grab it. Go ahead. It's yours. Does it hurt to move your hand? He comes in and ha has an idea. He says, ah, oh, okay, maybe it's a dislocated elbow. And now he's testing if his idea is true. He's saying, okay, can you grab this? Can you hold this? And he's watching her closely. He's not um, doing this uh, while he's talking to the mother and saying, ah, oh, come on. He's watching her. He's, this is his way of gathering empirical evidence. So he's looking, okay, this, this, this. He has his background. He knows how to act with people. He's looking, he's looking at her, he's uh, doing his tests, and now he has more information about the situation. Okay, so when we fix the elbow, it's like, I'll show you with this hand. We would pretend like we're shaking hands, like, hi, how do you do? And then we would turn your hand up like that, and then we would straighten it like that. Sometimes just doing that will pop it. If that doesn't work, I pull a little bit on your hand, and while I'm pulling, I put your palm up to your shoulder and poop, and it's fixed, okay? Now when we fix... Okay, this is again not topic of uh, this session, but he's showing her what he's going to do so she doesn't get scared. So we're gonna be very careful with your hurt arm. Now the first thing to do is to just feel your arm Make sure it doesn't hurt. So uh, folks, this is something you would be very careful at home. You wouldn't do this maneuver if somebody might have broken their arm. It's very important that they have the actual pull injury that dislocates the elbow. And so to make sure there's not a broken bone, we're gonna push on all the fingers, push on the hand, and you're watching facial expression while you do this. This is a common place for a fracture for a child. They fall on an outstretched hand and they break their bone right there. So you squeeze pretty hard and see, it doesn't bother her a bit. So we're squeezing all up and down, not a problem. We can wiggle the wrist, no problem. Move the arm like that, no problem. Okay, the first thing he, he did was he said, okay, let's check if there's really a problem. Is she injured? So he, he gave her the, um, the unicorn and said, can you grab this? Then he, he knows, okay, there is a problem. And now he's checking, okay, there could be two different problems. First, she could have broken her arm or she could have dislocated her elbow. And now he's checking. He is um, falsifying his first hypothesis that there's a broken arm. So he's, he's grabbing and says, okay, now it's fine. And then he knows, okay, it's, it's a um, dislocated elbow and now he starts acting. So remember, we're gonna shake hands. You support the elbow so you can feel it pop back into place. And then you turn it and it just popped. I just felt it when I turned it, I just felt, it's all fixed. Is it fixed? It's all fixed, you did it. Look, you won't be able to believe it, but you can hold this now, it works. Try it. The next thing will be, we will read a short text out of this book. Evidence-Based Practice of Cognitive Behavior Therapy from Deborah Dobson and Keith Dobson. We will read from page 107 till 
page uh, 109 till page 117. So if you want to check it out at home, you can do it. Um, and I want to quote one important part, uh, one important phrase actually. When beginning activity scheduling, make sure that you start where the client is, not where the client thinks he or she should be. Be very careful to avoid any judgment about the client's level of activity. And they printed on the next page um, a table where you can self-monitor your activities during the week. And we, and we will start with this exercise. So in the next week, I will give you a PDF below this video and the students will have a printout copy for themselves. You write down for every hour of every day, at this time I did that, there I did this and so on and so on. Because we want to act like Dr. Paul, we want to gather evidence, we want to think, you can have um, presumptions about it. You can say, okay, normally I spend this and this amount of time working or this and this am amount of, of time I'm learning, I'm, I'm reading, I'm watching TV. You will be surprised. People think, ah, I know myself. Normally, normally we don't. Um, try this out. We will gather information and next week we will start to act on this information.